All right. So I guess we are live. We got a few people rolling in and we are a bit late. I'm about six minutes late. Sorry for the delay. I had some trouble connecting to the streaming software, but yeah, finally I'm in. So today's class is going to be part two of last week's class on animating your digital art. Let, let's let's wait for more people to join in and then we we can just uh, get this show rolling. Hello, Shohan. I'm good. I'm very good. How about you? Okay, I, so I guess it's uh, you're good to go. We can start. So a brief introduction uh, uh, as we wait for more people to join in. Let me just uh go into detail about what we're going to be learning today so um yeah so it's all about presenting your art right so we are stuck with the traditional notion of you know being an artist uh being a digital artist we will be sketching we'll be drawing what we like and then we're putting them up on social media or on our portfolio and that's the end of it right but uh the world's moving by really fast and things are developing really fast and there are more and more new ways innovative ways of presenting your art and people with more technical knowledge like people with knowledge in uh, motion graphics or 3d uh, have a certain degree of advantage over you when it comes to standing out or making their work um, pop right so the competition is huge and you need to stand out you need to be unique. So that's where this class comes in. How can you make your art look more unique? Make them stand out. This, this is not, this class is not about how you can draw better, how you can paint better, but it's about how you can take your art, your already existing art to the next level. That's what the, this class is all about. So enough talk. Let me give you some, you know, actual demo. So. So previous week, uh, last week's class, we discussed how you can animate your art, but backgrounds. We talked about how you can animate your background. So for example, let's say this is a background image. And well, of course you can, you can upload it to your social media or your portfolio. And yeah, that's one way of presenting it. Or you can upload it as a GIF or maybe a video where this thing is moving or there's a range of dynamic motion or parallax animation effect in there and then end up making it look a lot more cooler than it ideally would as a static image okay so let me show you what we did last week's class so i'm just uh, waiting for this to buffer and and show you what we did okay so this is the correct file All right, sorry about that. I guess we had a brief a network issue. So yeah, we are back online. And so what I was saying, so today uh, we're gonna learn how we can animate 
our art. So to be more specific, we, we're going to take this image, this character, and we're going to animate him to look at to look at something like this. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And it's all going to happen in Photoshop. You don't need to know any complicated uh, 2D animation softwares like After Effects or Flash or Harmony, uh, Toon Boom, Flash and whatnot. All you have to do is just use the same software that you use to illustrate your art. Simple as that. It's just one software thing. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just I'll just start with uh, I'll start I'll just start with the background. I'll take the background of my art and bring it into Photoshop, drag and drop, and then I'll take uh, the character that I have and bring it into Photoshop. And yep, I'll increase size just a little bit. Cool. So now that we have the character placed on the background, well, by now you must have understood that um, you need the character, your character that you have drawn separated from the background. They need not, they shouldn't be merged into one layer. Okay, that makes animation difficult or rather impossible. So you need to have your character and your background in separate layers. Okay. And that's not it. You also need to have the sev several body parts of this character in different layers so that you can animate them. Uh, and this process may be known as rigging. So the rigging is basically creating a skeletal system of your character that has actual joints and body parts connected by joints that you can move along them. So, and following that, you need to cut out cut this um, character out into separ separ several uh, parts. So just to give you an, uh, a brief about how you're going to be cutting out this character. So right now it's in a single layer, but we have to cut out the various body parts. And that's the part that's the part that's like part one of this whole process. And it's the most boring and uh, time taking and uh, something that needs a lot of patience. But what comes after that, the actual animation process is very, very easy. It's super easy. Okay. So, so this is, this is how you're going to split this body up. So this is small as going to be the torso. Okay. So that's going to be one part. Then you're going to have the head that's going to be separate. Then the legs are going to be separate, but it's not that, um, it's going to be a bit more than that. So the upper leg or the thigh has to be separate. Then the lower leg, same for the other legs, thigh, upper leg, lower leg. And then coming to the arms, uh, the shoulder and bicep separate and your forearm and palm separate. So that's how we're going to be uh, chopping up this character into different body parts. and. They're going to be moving along joints. Now, the joints, the key joints are going to be around these places. Around the hip, the knee, elbow, shoulder, and the neck. So these are going to be our key points along which we will be moving the various body parts. So if you connect these um, joints, you're roughly going to get, uh, you know, like a skeletal skeleton so this is basically our character broken down into a very simple stick figure like thing which is a, the basically our rig now enough with the enough of that now it's time to actually uh, learn how you can separate the various body parts in a separate layer so to start off, I'll, uh, I'll rasterize the layer. So right click on the layer and click on rasterize layer. Now you can easily cut it into you know, several uh, pieces like as based on what you need. So I'll start off with the leg. So I'll choose the lasso tool and make sure that from these type of types, the different types of selection, the second option is selected. It's 
usually the first one by default, but make sure it's the second one because this is additive selection. So no matter how many selections you create, they all get added up. Okay, that's very important. So I just um, make a quick rough selection for the thigh. And once I uh, get closer to the joint, I'll just roughly cut, cut it out. I, I don't have to be too neat. A bit of roughness is fine. It doesn't have to be too polished. Okay, so once that's done, I'm gonna press Control Shift J on my keyboard. And that'll just cut that leg out and put it in a separate layer. Separate layer, as you can see. So next thing that I need to do, that, that was first step, okay, uh, for the whole this rigging process. You need to cut it out into a separate layer. And the next part is you need to extend the background. So why do you need to extend the background? So for example, let's say you have this leg and you want to move it and you know, rotate it. So once you do, you get this weird empty space behind it and it looks very odd. So that's something that uh, we don't want. So that's why we need to extend uh, the part behind it. So there's one way of doing it is you can just go select this area, the hip part and just make that selection like that. And then well, you can extend it a bit more like this. And then press Shift F5 on your keyboard, Shift and F5. Make sure uh, move tool is selected and then Shift F5. And make sure that it's uh, the layer is, you need to make sure that you're on the right layer. So if um, you're doing it on a layer that is switched off, so the shortcut is not gonna work. So make sure it's uh, you, you've selected the right layer that to where you wanna extend the part. So make sure you've selected the right, right layer and then press Shift F5 on your keyboard and it brings up the fill panel. So from there, content, make sure for the drop down you have selected content aware. Sometimes it's 50% gray, gray or something else. So make sure it's content aware and then press OK. And it'll sort of extend. Uh, it's like an AI feature. So it just takes, uh, it just processes information from nearby area, the nearby textures and colors and sort of calculates or just creates uh, that extension. So the next thing that you can do is actually you can just select the smudge tool and you can just smudge it down slightly. You can increase the strength to around 80, 90, even 100% and just smudge it down like this. It won't be a huge issue. Because after all, this is not going to be visible all that much. So I'll be animated. So once you have that extension, now you can try moving the leg or rather rotating and see the difference. So it's not that odd anymore. It's certainly way better than before, I guess. A lot better than before. So that's why we need to create that extension. Um, so yeah, so that was one way of doing it, making it pretty manual. Now let's check out the other way. So let's uh, cut out the other leg. Okay, just like before, very rough selection. There's no need to be too neat with this. Because all this detail in the end will not matter too much. Because the animation is going to be uh, just a few seconds. And hardly people are going to notice these tiny, tiny flaws. Now, uh, coming back to the layer, uh, control shift j separated into a different layer and it's time for the extension so for the extension let's try something different this time instead of manually selecting that extra part with a lasso tool what you can do is click on the thumbnail of this layer uh, symbol it means it becomes red one, one good enough 
make sure this is below the thigh layer as well. Since uh, the way it's meant to work, thigh is gonna be above, the upper leg is gonna be above, and the lower leg is gonna be below. But this is how it's gonna move. This is how it's gonna look. So we have more or less separated the uh, lower body. Now it's time for the arms. So I'm hoping I'm audible and the stream is going through. I can get a comment in the I can, if I can get one message from any of you that uh, stream is healthy, that'll be great. Anyway. So we just separated the legs. Now it's time for the upper body and the arms. So I'll cut out the head now. Heads up next. Let's take it just a little bit at a time. There, done. Now in layer. All right, so I guess we are back online. All right, so let's cut out the forearm and the fist very quickly because we're almost done with this boring, tedious part of the process. Almost there to we'll make the selections. So that is done. I can smudge those areas just a little bit and that'll do the trick. And finally, we have to separate the upper arm along the shoulder. So let's get that done and we'll be done with this entire step. Almost there. There. Now control shift J and it's separate now. Just need to ex uh, extend the shoulder area. So span selection by one pixel and then Deselect the extra excess part and she's done. Less the rasterize less object, it won't work, it will merge. Now that we have uh, raster converted all the way to smart objects, next up is animating this. So, in order to do that, you need to have a timeline. So, you can go to Windows, Workspace, and choose motion or you can go all the way down and click on timeline so that will bring up this panel at the bottom and you can click on create video timeline and it will bring up this thing that looks like ex almost exactly like a layer panel all the layers are arranged in exactly the same order 
and you can zoom in and zoom out from this slider down here. So you can play, you can click on play to see this move. So for a small animation like this, it can last for about three seconds. Okay. So I'm gonna bring it and drag it all the way down to somewhere around here. You can see this option three. And then there's double zero F. So this F stands for frame. So if any number comes after the three, then it's usually for frame. So like 15 F is like 15 frame. So don't no need to like every second is more or less made of uh, made up of 24 frames. So three seconds is good. Now I'm gonna limit this video up to this mark. So I'll just drag this big slider up here and drag it down to this part till three seconds. So my video is gonna stop right here. So this is where, this is the, our animation area. Basically, this is our work area. So everything we animate is gonna stay bound within this area. All right, so next step is, well, we're gonna go all the way to the left and you can see these, this, uh, right arrow that looks like a play button so i'm going to click on each of these and it'll uh, expand this layer further to show you some more options like trans transform opacity style etc so i'm going to just go on go to each layer and click on that arrow to expand nice and easy missed one down there all right so yeah all the layers have been expanded so Next, what we're going to do, the fun part is just about to start, guys. So I, I hope you're ready for the magic. <laughs> so I'll go all the way to the left. That is a starting point. And I'm going to select. All right. So we missed one thing is that uh, we have to go to the starting point, And then if you go all the way to the left, you get, get this option called transform. It's under the uh, expansion of every layer. So you're going to click on this small stopwatch symbol that you see on the left side. Click on that and it will create this yellow diamond shape thing and it's called a keyframe. A key keyframe marks and records the current position of a particular layer. And what it does is, is it records that current position. So next time you move it to uh, some different position at some other point in time, so it just calculates in between motion from one keyframe to another. I know this sounds confusing, but it's all going to get cleared out in a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to each layer and click on that uh, stopwatch symbol right next to transform. That is what I'm doing is um, setting a keyframe at that particular starting point for all the layers, right? So once that's done, I'm going to go all the way to the end of the video, end of the animation, which is somewhere right along this uh, capped endpoint. And then I'm going to select all the layers. I'm going to uh, click on the last layer and shift and click on the first layer. So now all the layers are selected. And I'm going to press Control T. And then I'm going to press Alt and drag it. For some of you using older versions, maybe Alt plus Shift. New versions is going to be just Alt. So just drag it out like this and maybe slightly rotate it make it a bit more cooler and dynamic and enter. So as you can see for all the layers, you have a fresh bunch of diamond shape set. So these are keyframes that have been set. If you, if you go all the way to the left, you can see the animation at work. So the layers have been animated. Let's wait for this to buffer and we will see how it looks. All right, so yeah, this is how it looks so far. A very solid animation. You can't really call this an animation really because uh, it's more like a zoom in effect. That's what it is. There's no sense of depth or 3D space in there. That is the fun part that we're, we're going to be creating up next. And it's going to take this thing to the whole new level, right? So what I'll do is one by one, I'm going to deselect layers from below. So next up, I'm going to deselect the background. 
So now all we, what we have selected is the character. So press Control T, it'll select the entire um, character, and then I'm gonna press Alt Shift and increase the size of this guy, and maybe slightly, just slightly rotate him like this, and enter. Well, uh, I made a mistake there because I I was uh, I, this cursor was set at the starting point, so it has to be set at the exact point that is the end point right there. It shouldn't be the first, okay? So yeah, once again, let's do this. Last layer deselected and only the character selected so far. Uh, Control T to bring up the free selection option. And I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and increase the size or scale him up and give him, a, give him just a little bit of rota rotation like that. And enter and yeah. That is done. It's already looking quite cool. Having a bit of an issue right there. Scratch this. Try to sort that out. That's done. This really is getting full, isn't it? Okay. We just a little bit of zoom won't hurt. I think that's fine. Now it's time to animate the various body parts, okay? So let's start by animating the entire upper body. So upper body will mean the head, the limbs. Yeah, basically that's it, the head and the limbs. So now that I've selected these layers, I'll press Control T. I'll set the pivot point or anchor point that, that is the center point that you can see. Let's drag it somewhere around here, at the middle of the hip. And then I'm gonna press uh, Control Shift Alt, to sort of get it into perspective, uh, perspective transform like this i'm going to expand it and maybe shift it up it's going to create this illusion that uh, the upper body is coming sort of it's expanding right it's a very subtle movement but it's there Next up, what I can do is I can um, increase the size of the head just a little bit. So control T and I'll expand the head just a bit. Maybe move it to the front, left side just a little bit. Maybe give it a just a little bit of a rotation. So that's what it looks like now. Maybe the scale can go up just a little bit more. Okay. Now it's time for the left arm that is at the back. So control T, I'll set the pivot point or anchor point near the shoulder area where it should be. And now I'm going to be rotating it down and then Again, in perspective transform mode, I'm gonna increase, decrease the size like this, make it look a bit short as if the arm is going back, bring it down just a little bit, a little bit more of rotation, and then maybe you shift it a little bit in to show that the arm is going back and the torso is coming to the front to create that sense of perspective. So yeah. That's what it looks like. Maybe it can come up just a little bit. All right. That's good. Very good, in fact. Now it's time for right arm. So I'll select 
the two layers, that is the upper arm and forearm. Then I'll press Control T on my keyboard and I'll set. Just bring the upper arm to the top and top uh, above the head layer actually because uh, it's more closer to us. Then Control T and I'm going to set the pivot point near the shoulder and then again once again in perspective mode I'm going to be increasing the size just a little bit to create that depth Maybe rotate it up just a little bit. Right, so that is done. So maybe it is moving a little too much to the left and it can be avoided. Control T and I'll just shift it a little bit to the left. Okay, that is good. And now for the upper arm, go to the layer, control T. I'll set the pivot point near the um, elbow and then I'll rotate the arm. And I'll expand it a little bit more like that. It's really coming, sort of coming out of the frame kind of a vibe. Of dynamic foreshortening right there. So I guess we can tone it down just a little bit. So let's keep it simple. I'll set the pivot point right there once again and oh, um, Just the forearm, set the pivot point there and rotate it up a little bit. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so we are done animating the upper body, which is like a really dynamic motion. You can see if I zoom out the whole thing, it's crazy. Now it's time for the legs. So I'll go to uh, the right leg. And once again, control T, I'll set the pivot point near the shoulder joint. Okay, so I'm running out of space apparently. So set it right there. Now and expand it and rotate it just slightly to get that sense of movement. So this is how it looks. Reduce it in perspective, view just a little bit. Yeah. If it's coming.
now for the rear leg control t set the pivot point rotate it just a little bit increase it in size and perspective make it a bit short and screw it screw it in okay i get that the first point should be the last point control t set the pivot point and get the hip joint once again Use the size in perspective, screw it back in, and yeah, done. Then, control T, a lower arm for the lower leg, push it back in. It's done. So this is basically how the animation looks now. Yeah, I'm just going to click on the play button and let this buffer. We'll see what we just created. And then it's time to play. Yeah. There it is.